Hey everybody, today I'll be showing you how to create a dungeon quest laser. Now, before we actually get started, you should have a little bit of scripting experience and Roblox Studio experience. But without further ado, let's get started. So first, I am going to insert a part. So it can be any part. Well, we're just going to insert a basic part. Okay, so now we have a part. You could just like click the plus here or you can do some fancy stuff. I don't know. And we can change the properties like the colors. Now, make sure you change the color to something something bright like something like this so I'm gonna change it to purple okay this is a good color I'm gonna make it purple and I'm also going to change the material to neon when I change the part to neon this creates a glow effect which is very important when it comes to creating lasers I'm going to change the transparency to something like 0 0.8 so it doesn't hurt my eyes and then we can change the size I'm gonna change the size to something very long so like this Something like that. This could be very long. Make it a little bit bigger. Now, if you don't have the building tools plugin, you can use uh, these ones right here. So it's, it does the same thing, but I prefer the other plugin that I used. So now that we have the size, we need to also change the behavior properties too. Turn off can collide so that the player can walk through the laser. And also turn on anchored so that it doesn't fall through the ground. And it just stays there, which is good. That is what we need. Okay, so here we have the laser fully configured. Now we're going to add a script inside. I'm going to name it laser script. And then we're going to define our variables. So we're going to define the part which is the laser, so local laser equals, oh, I mistyped that, local laser equals script dot parent. And we're also going to be using tween service, which allows the laser to fade from a full transparency of zero to nothing, which is going to be important later. So local tween service equals games colon get service tween service. And this just gets the, the tween service, which handles most of the animations from property to property. Now, we're going to create a touch interest. Now, a touch interest is an object that appears when the laser has a touch event. So basically, let's say I create a touch event. So laser.touched connect function end. And you can see what happens when we try to load in. It creates a touch interest. As you can see, there is a touch interest. Now, this is really important because it allows the laser to identify what objects touch it. So that's going to be really important. So we're going to keep this. Now, let's create our first function, which is local function get colliding players. Now, this returns a table of all, all of the players that are touching the laser. So first, we'll create an empty table. So local colliding players equals that. And then we're going to create a for loop. So for i object impairs laser colon get touching parts too. So basically what this loop will do is it will loop through every object that is touching the laser. Let's assume that the object's parent is a player. So basically the object could be a body part or something like that. So we're going to say local player equals game dot players colon get player from character object that parent. So basically what this will do is it will return a player object of the object's parent. And now the object could be like a leg or a torso or like your arm, your hand. And the object's parent is a character and a character can be like a person. And so in each player in a game has its own character. So object.parent is the character and this function will return a player object of the player's character. And then we're going to also create a uh, boolean value which can be either true or false so local found equals false this will be important and then we're going to create another for loop so we're gonna i'm gonna put an x to avoid confusion colliding player in pairs pairs colliding players too so basically what this will do is it will iterate through every player inside this colliding players table and it will check if the current player that has touched the laser is equal to the player inside the table. This is important so that the player doesn't get hit like twice or three times, which is pretty much unfair. So what we're trying to do here is detect if the player has already touched the laser. We're going to type if player is equal to C player or C player is equal to player. Then we're going to say that found equals true and then we're going to break the loop. Now, what this will do is it will check, okay, so 
we're iterating through the players in the planning players table. Now let's see, is this player equal to this player? So if they're the same thing, and basically, so if this player is already inside this table, now we're going to say that found equals true, meaning that, well, it just means that found equals true. And then we're going to break through the loop. And then we're going to say, if not found, then table.insert colliding players colon player. So it's basically saying if the player is already inside the table, then found equals true, meaning that it won't be able to go insert the player again because the statement if not found then means like if found is equal to false. So so let's say a player is already inside this colliding players table. Well, it's going to go through that. We're going to see if the player is equal to the player inside the table. Now it's going to say found equals true. So it won't go into here and insert the player. Okay, so now we have the function get colliding players. That is going to be really important. Now we are going to create another function, which is the function that does damage to all of the players inside the colliding players table. So local function do damage. And we're going to put the damage parameter inside. Well, we don't need to. We can probably insert a damage variable here. So we can say local damage equals 20 per se. So first we're going to get the colliding players table. Oh yeah, we forgot one crucial step, which is to return the colliding players table. So return colliding players. This allows this table to be returned, which is going to be important. Local colliding players equals get colliding players. So basically what this is doing is, okay, it's calling this function. And then this is going to do all of this fancy code. And this will return a table of all of the players that are touching the laser back into this variable. So this variable will become a table. Now we're going to do damage to each of the players inside. So for I player in pairs colliding players do. We're going to get the character. So local char. I'm going to say char for short. Character equals player dot character. Okay. If there is a character. So we're going to say, okay, what happens if there's no character? Then it won't run through this code. So if there is a character, then we're going to define the humanoid. So local hum. So hum is humanoid in short, now just to reduce the amount of words I have to type and stuff. So local hum, humanoid equals car, find first child, humanoid. Humanoid colon take damage. And this is, and this is what actually does damage to the players. So we're going to do, okay, humanoid take damage, damage. Now, since we defined the variable damage as 20, that means that this damage will be 20. Now there is the actual actual laser script. So what we're going to do is we're going to say laser.transparency equals 0 0.8. Okay, so that's that's going to be the warning sign because you know in Dungeon Quest they show the lasers and you have to dodge them before they flash. So that's the warning sign and then we're going to create a reaction time. So reaction time is the amount of time it takes before the laser actually flashes. I'm going to define the reaction time variable here. So local reaction time equals, uh, I could say is one second. One second is really good. So wait reaction time. And this script will pause for one second because the wait function pauses the script, okay? And then we're going to make the laser flash. So we're going to do laser.transparency equals zero. And then we're going to create a tween. Okay, now this tween is going to make the laser fade into invisibility. And how are we going to do that? Well, it's simple. First, we're going to create a fade tween, which is like an animation object. Local fade tween equals tween service, call on create. And this will create a tween, which is like a, just imagine an animation, like a video or something like that. So basically this tween will act on a laser. And then we're going to add some additional information, which is tween info.new. And what we're going to do inside the tween info dot new is we're going to describe the duration of the tween. I'm going to say like 0 0.25 because it should fade to invisibility really quick. So I'm going to change the easing style, which is the way how the animation plays. Like, will it go slow and then really fast? Or will it go fast and then really slow? So enum dot easing style dot linear. So linear is when the tween goes directly like straight into its goal properties, which is good. So enum.easingstyle.linear and enum.easingstyle.inout. So enum.easingstyle.inout is basically the normal, the normal easing direction. Oh wait, I should put easing direction instead of easing style. Okay. And then we're going to put the goal properties. And what we're trying to accomplish here with the fade tween is to change the laser's transparency. 
So we're gonna say transparency equals one. And then we're going to play the the tween. Okay, so fade tween dot. Well, fade tween column play. And now this will play the actual tween animation thing. So basically what we're trying to accomplish is to make this laser fade from a huge flash into invisibility. So transparency equals one. So if you don't know what transparency is, it's basically like, is it like invisible or how invisible you want it to be? So it's very visible. And then you can see if it's one, it's fully invisible. I'm going to put it at, yeah, I'm going to make it. One. And then we're going to wait until the tween is finished and then we're going to disable the strip so that it can run again when it's enabled again. So fade tween dot, uh, completed wait. Uh, and then we're going to say script dot disabled equals true. Okay, it's going to wait until this tween is finished and it's going to disable the script. So if you want to activate the laser, you can disable the script and then it'll run through all this code and then it's going to stop and then it's going to stop. It's going to disable again so you can re-enable re it later. Now we are going to test the laser. Okay, it's right there. I should probably make it a little bit more visible like uh, 0 0.95. I think that will do. I also added a wait function here so we can so we can see the laser activate and do stuff. Now we might get errors, so we can fix that easily. Okay, we'll wait a few seconds. Oh, did you see that? It works. So you can see how the laser just flashed. Now we're going to go into to an actual test where we actually play as a character. And hopefully we get there in time. If not, then that'll be sad. Okay, and we didn't make it in time. Okay, I extended the wait time to 10 seconds. So we should be 100% guaranteed able to get to the laser in time. Oh, it activates and nothing happened. Oh, because I didn't actually activate the do damage function. Whoopsies. Okay, let's do it again. So we're going to do the do damage. Okay. Now that's very important or else the laser won't do damage. Okay, so let's see. And as you can see, it did some damage, which is good. And that, my friends, is how you create a laser. So. Okay, here is the final result of the script. So you can type all of this stuff here. And I'll slowly scroll down as you can see. If you need to, you can pause the video if necessary. Okay, that is it. So that is it for today's video. Now, I'm sorry for the lack of uploads. Okay, whatever. I, I'll do some stuff later in the future. But I decided to do a laser tutorial. And this is really important because lasers are important in dungeon quest bosses, as you can see. So if you know how to create lasers and how to activate them and script them, then you can soon be able to create bosses and sequences of lasers, which will be really fun. So yeah, thank you for watching and, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye and have a good day. Ah!